Turn with me in your Bibles this morning to 2 Corinthians chapter 1. 2 Corinthians and chapter 1. We have no spatials this morning. Do we have anybody that is spatial? Raise your hand. Huh? Amen. I got one for you if you want me to. No, we're, 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 we're going to move on a little bit. Get All right, but we can get you scheduled, that's for sure. That's, go ahead. Uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 1. Today, the title of the message, if I'm allowed to title one of these, uh, is the encourager, the encourager. And that's 2 Corinthians in chapter 1. And we're going to read verse 3 down through verse 7. If you have found your place, please stand to reverence the reading of God's word in his house today. Amen? Amen. The encourager. The encourager. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3 through 7. And this is the reading of his word. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble, by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, so our consolation also aboundeth by Christ. And whether we be afflicted, it is for your consolation and salvation, which is effectual in the enduring of the same sufferings which we also suffer. Or whether we be comforted, it is for your consolation and salvation. Verse 7. And our hope of you is steadfast, knowing that as you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall ye also of the consolation. Father in heaven, Lord, we thank you this morning for the reading of thy word. Father, we pray that we'll put it in our hearts and walk thereby and worship and praise and glorify you here in your house today. For it's in Christ's name we do pray. And all God's children said, Amen. 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 You may be seated. Now, if you've got those verses down, we'll move on. Amen. Mm. Amen. All right. Well, let's go back to that uh, comforting and that consolation for a moment. Uh, you know, every Christian that I meet, and, and maybe you can say the same, but every Christian that I meet, or not every Christian that I meet, is an encourager. You ever notice that? You'll find those Christians that are encouraging. They will encourage you. If you're going to school, they're going to say, we well, you know I pray you do good on your science test. Or if you play sports, I pray that you'll win the game today. Or whatever you may be doing in life, they're going to say, well, I hope you're a winner. I hope that you do well. I hope that you please your parents. I hope you please God. I really love seeing you in church today. The encourager. In whatever area of life that someone needs to be encouraged in, we don't know. So why don't we encourage them in multi uh, areas of their life. Can I get an amen? amen? The encourager. For we are here. For we are the house of saints. If there is anyone. Anyone on this earth. That can encourage others. It, it's got to be his, the saints. For we have so much to say. And so much to tell. Because God has gave us so much. So we can encourage people on and on. Every Christian you meet may not be an encourager. Amen. But every Christian you meet should be an encourager. I got a little something here I'd like to read. Maybe some of you have heard it. For a long time, I know this is one of my little secrets, my little pet peeves I like. Okay? Okay. When I was a kid, I just loved Winnie the Pooh, okay? All right. Winnie the Pooh and Piglet is walking together in this picture. And um, possibly, I guess, they're walking through their 100-acre wood. 
Um, but one is speaking to the other. I don't know if it's the little pip pip pig or I don't know if it's Pooh. But one of them is speaking to the other one, and it says this. If ever there is a tomorrow when we're not together, when we're not together, there is something you must always remember. You are braver than you believe. You're stronger than you seem, and you're smarter than you think. But the most important thing is, even if we're apart, <clears throat> I'll always be with you. Is that not some encouragement? Now listen, that's a make-believe stuff bear. Amen? What an encouragement it is to, uh, to be walking. And if you were poo or if you were the big I'm okay with either one because what an encouragement uh, this is. You're just, you encouraging someone about who they are. But what is, is great about the encouragement is it's not at face value. It's authentic. It's real. You're being honest. And that's what makes it so great. Theodore, Theodore Roosevelt, our 26th president, said this. If you could kick the person responsible for most of your trouble... He said, you wouldn't be able to sit down for a month. Amen? Amen. <laughs> i got to believe he's, he's, he's got a point there. Mm. The church member that is an encourager, now let me tell you this, pleases God. Yes. The church member or the attender, the Christian, the believer, that is an encourager, pleases God. Did you think about that? I want to read you this. I, I love this. And this is another one of my favorites I used to, to read on Saturday mornings. And I, I know the internet. I, I don't know if they still have newspapers and such. But back when I was, I was a freshman in high school, um, I, I read this little uh, cartoon. It's the Peanuts cartoon. Uh, from, uh, of course, uh, Schultz uh, wrote this. It was on March 15th of 1981. Let me read this little cartoon comic strip to you. You remember Lucy's little homemade stand. I think she had one for lemonade too. Psychiatrist. She was the psychiatrist. And then at the bottom, the psychiatrist was in or open or something. Lucy would have one there. And here comes old Charlie Brown. And here's a victim. He's coming. <clears throat> Lucy's sitting in her homemade psychiatric booth. <clears throat> She's beginning to counsel Charlie Brown. <clears throat> she says this. Maybe I could put it another way. Life, Charlie Brown, is like a deck chair. Charlie <laughs> Brown says, like a what? Lucy says, have you ever been on a cruise ship? Passengers open up these canvas deck chairs so they can sit in the sun. Some people place their chairs facing the rear of the ship so they'll, they'll know or remember from where they're coming from, where they've been. Other people face their chairs forward. They want to see where they're going. On the cruise ship of life, Charlie Brown, which way is your deck chair facing? He says, I've never been able to get mine unfolded. And I thought that was pretty good. Yeah. And you know, some of us, we just, we work with that old chair, and we just, it, it's still folded up. Uh, but you know, some Christians, we have to play uh, the other side of the coin. Some Christians, I run from. You say, yes, me, I'll run from, and you do too. If, if I could get you an honest amen, now listen before you amen. You, when you meet that Christian that is a discourager, he, he he or she is filled with just critical complaints and bitterness and sourness. And, th and this discourager blames everyone in their path and everything that's came in their path. And that's the reason they're discouraged. Mm -hmm. So when they meet you, you haven't seen them in a month. But when you bump into them, the way they talk to you, you're half the problem. And you haven't even seen them. The clouds are not moving fast enough. Something
something is wrong all the time. And these are the people that I try to run from, and can I get an amen? I'll close my eyes. Yes. In Jeremiah, just something of a discourager, and I think this is a really good definition. Therefore, the princes, or the, or the, uh, the rulers, the kings, uh, or not the kings, the, the rulers uh, under the king, his counselors. Uh, Therefore, the princes said unto the king, we beseech you, we're, we're asking you, let this man be put to death. Now, this is in Jeremiah 38. For thus he weakened the hands of the men of war that remain in this city. Wow. And the hands of all the people in speaking such words unto them. You see, that's what the discourager does. And in Jeremiah, they're saying, O king, can you put him to death? We are tired of him. We're tired of his mouth, and we're tired of him talking to everybody and bringing everybody down in this city, and we're tired of his attitude. Now, that's in the Bible. That's not me. For this man, he seeks not the welfare of the people, but the harm. And you know, a lot of times, that's what a discourager does. A discourager, when they come out, Sometimes they're so proud and happy to be one that is a discourager, they're smile, they're smiling while they're telling you that you're half the problem. I just want to run. I want to avoid these people. You say you're a Christian, praise God. I still want to avoid you. Amen? Amen. Because of the discouragement. By the time you get done talking with someone that is like this, I have to go home and take a nap. I'm emotionally <laughs> drained. Amen? Amen. And, and I think my t-shirt underneath is just soaking wet because i got to hold back in humbleness and, and not say something. Uh, and, whew, let me go. Jeremiah says, you know, this is just worthy of death. You know, the discourager. Wow. Discouragement, a lot is like pronouncing a curse on someone. You know, um, and at times, it's just sheer torment being around one that is such in such a way. You know, and here's something else. It's not only the discourager and the blamer and the critical and the fault find. It's not just this. You know, a lot of times when those people are speaking these words, you notice that Jeremiah said that they're affecting the hands of the men of war in the city. When someone tells you that you're a loser, that you're a failure, your efforts are not making a difference. You should just go home, pack it up. You know, sometimes that really plays on people's hearts and minds. And that's cruel. And it's affecting the men that's defending this city. The king didn't take too high of that. It affects. Now, how does it affect someone so intense? Because it's not of God. It's not of God. When I put on here the encouragement, that may be you, and I pray it is. But I'm actually talking about God. So, failure and sin, when I went through a, well, it's kind of like a little bit like Lucy's psychiatric booth, I guess. When I had to take some some classes on psychology in, in, in school. You know, you got to learn all kinds of the mental uh, framework and things, these kinds of things, all the um, things that can affect people's mind and how and the why. And, and you know, um, when it came to discouragement and when it came to this uh, chapter in that book that I was studying, the psychology book, you know, discouragement does a great deal of damage. It really does. It does a lot of damage. Now, it's okay to be critical with someone if you're encouraging them in a critical fashion. But just right out now, it's not from God. And I'm going to tell you what, I wholeheartedly believe that a discouraged, bitter, pruned, sour Christian is being operating, is operating under Satan itself. 
Do you? Can I get an amen? Now, I'm not saying you get mad this afternoon and, um, you know, Brandon's the devil. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about a person that just, that lays in misery, loves misery. And they always say misery loves what? Okay. So come on down. I see you coming out of the store. Let me run up to you. Amen. In 2 Corinthians, did you know that God is called the God of, of all encouragement? Well, now look back here at our text in 2 Corinthians. Look in verse 3. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, blessed be God, even his Son, uh, that is God, but he's the Lord Jesus Christ. When he's here in the flesh upon the earth, that's what it means. Uh, but the Father of mercies. Very important there. You notice mercies is in the plural. But he is the God of all what? Comfort. When you begin to, to look at the word comfort, it's paraclesis. Where we get the word paraclete. Where we get the English word the Holy Spirit. Which means encouragement. That's what the word here means. When you begin talking about encouragement, this whole beginning of this chapter basically is starting off with God being the encourager. Uh, blessed be God, the God of all comfort, uh, the Father of mercies. Now, there's two mercies here that is in our text that is being talked about. Number one is our comforter, our helper, our helpmate, our one that stands beside of us, the encourager. All of those are describing encouragement, hope. Now, who gives us all of this? Jesus said, is it expedient that I must go away? And then who will come? The Comforter. He will give you hope and so and so and so. But also, part of the Holy Spirit, his ministry, is to encourage you and me. He gives us hope. He is the second part of that uh, mercy. He is our advocate. He is the one that is for us, that roots us on, that gives us uh, the ability to press on and serve the Father. So the mercies, blessed be God, for what? For the mercies that he bestows upon us, for he encourages us, and he also is our advocate, which wants to propel us forward in the work of the Father. Now, I know you read Consolation and all these kinds of things. Look at verse uh, 3 again. Comfort is encouragement. 1 John chapter 2. I'm going to read this just for a minute. Listen to this. My little children, these things I write unto you, that you sin not. And if any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father. Jesus Christ the righteous. So little do you know, not only is the Holy Spirit leading you, Jesus is walking with you. An advocate, a paraclete, is someone that walks right beside you. Wow. So if we do sin, we have Christ with us. And he is the propitiation, he is the atonement, he's the appeaser of God's wrath. Upon sin. For our sins, not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. So here we begin to see God, the comforter, consolation, encourager in our text. Look at verse 4. Now I'm going to read this the way it would be on the way of the word, which means encourages. Verse 4. Who encourages us in all of our tribulation. Makes sense, doesn't it? That we may be able to encourage them which are in any trouble. Hmm. By the encouragement which we ourselves are comforted, or which we ourselves are encouraged of God. You see, when you go through difficult times, there's more. The God just doesn't say, well, guess what? 
Boy, I see guy over there. You wait till next week. God said, I'm going to get him. He's, 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 that's not how God works. But if God or, or Darren or whoever it may be, if God's got a purpose for you to fulfill, and the purpose for you is to suffer, and you don't understand, and you don't know why, but you're suffering, and then when you are in the midst of that suffering, God encourages you, and boy, he gives you great a great feeling of rising in your heart, and so much encouragement and hope, and he's saying, your suffering's almost over. Bear with me. Stay close with, to me. And then the suffering is over. <laughs> and it will be maybe in a short time that you'll run into a friend or someone in your family, someone at the workplace, and they'll say, man, you don't know what I've been going through. Guess what? I just got out of that. I do know what you're going through. I can encourage you. I can help you. Because I just went through that. And now you understand the purpose sometimes of suffering. Or whatever may, God may have on his plate for you. Because you are being possibly geared to encourage another. Mm. You see, God's ways are not our ways. And we can't always figure all of these out. Look at verse 5. For as the sufferings of Christ are abundant in us, and we know that we suffer quite a bit for Christ, now not as much as uh, some, but we do know we do suffer, so is our encouragement abundant through Christ. <laughs> look, look, when, 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 I, when I'm going through a difficult time, and I, I'm going through something, and boy, I don't want to be going through it. And I think God should have done it different. And, and those people down there at the church, they don't understand, my friend. He don't even call me no more. The dog don't even call when I give him his food bowl. Nothing is going right. I don't know why I'm here. You know, the whole world is upside down. If they would listen to me, everybody could get it right. Anybody ever say that before? Uh -huh. Rest of you forgiven. Amen. And then when I open this up, and I'll say, Paul, Apostle of Jesus Christ, by the will, well, all that stuff goes out, that goes right on out. I don't have to get far in my Bible, and the words encourage me so much. That's why it's so important to read your Bible. For as the sufferings of Christ abound in us, our encouragement is abundant through Christ. If you pick up this word of God, I don't care where you're at. Wow, Numbers chapter 24. When Balaam saw that it pleased the Lord, doesn't matter where you turn, you can turn anywhere you want. You're going to get encouraged. The problem that I have is not that you find an encouragement in the word. The problem I have is if you're not encouraged by the word. Mm -hmm. Something's broken there. Uh, so there's a tip and a top missing. Amen. Something's broke. And uh, you need to get it fixed. Uh, but now listen. God's word is so encouraging. God is the encourager through his word. Through his Holy Spirit. Through the living word. Which is Jesus and the written word. He encourages. All through us is encouraged as a Christian. Verse 7. And our hope. <laughs> Uh, for you, you Corinthians, some of you that are bitter and discouraged, uh, we hope that you're steadfast, firmly grounded, knowing that you are partakers of the sufferings, so shall you also of the comfort, hope, and encouragement. He's teaching the Corinthian church this, the importance of encouragement. He says, hey, we're all partakers. We all belong to Jesus Christ. We all suffer. We're all like this. But you know what? You don't have to be bitter and sour and discouraged. You know why? Because your maker in heaven is not. The one that hung for you on the cross is not. And the one that walks in God's and dwells in you, the Holy Spirit, he is not. They are not discouragers. They are encouragers in all our walks of life. So why are we discouraged? 
Charles Stanley wrote this little article. I don't know how long ago it's been. He said this. He said, disappointment is inevitable. We're all going to be disappointed at one time. If, if you're breathing, you're going to be disappointed at one time in your life. But to be discouraged, Charles is saying, there's a choice I make. God would never discourage me. He would always point me to himself to trust in him. <laughs> Therefore, my discouragement is from Satan. As you go through the emotions that we have, and we do, hostility is not from God. Bitterness, unforgiveness, all of these are the attacks from Satan. Well put. I couldn't put it any better. That's why I copied and pasted it. Charles is right on the mark. That's what even the psychology book was pointing to, although it was kind of a book uh, that was maybe a little bit unbiblical. They just couldn't point to God and all the scriptures. You could tell the author, some of the authors wanted to. They just couldn't say that. But the discouragement for a believer is, is unheard of when it comes to God and Jesus and the Holy Spirit. Could you imagine God, Jesus saying this? It is expedient for me to go away, that I may send you a discomforter so you'll be discouraged for the rest of your life on this earth. No. God said, well... You know, I'm going to lead you in a way of discouragement today. Boy, I hope you're just down in the dumps. I just hope that somebody just up, basically just backs that truck up and runs over you. I would probably laugh and get a kick out of that. Have a great day. See you later. No. God is always full of encouragement. Can we not take the encouragement that we just read here? Can we not take, not Satan, that's the discouragement, the one in the passage. Can we not take all of this comfort, consolation, encouragement, and hope? Can we not share it with others? It seems to me like we could be so full of encouragement if we allow ourselves to be that we wouldn't have time to be discouraged. As we press on, turn over to Acts chapter 4 with me real quick as... Um, time is permitting, but Acts chapter 4, Acts chapter 4, and verse 36. Now, we talked about our Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Acts chapter 4, now I want you to meet a man, real quick. Acts chapter 4, verse 36. Acts 4 and 36. God gives us a man in the scriptures that's named the Son of encouragement. Do you know his real name? His real name is Joseph. Does that give you any, any clue to who he is? Look at verse 36 with me. And Joseph, who by the apostles were named Barnabas. Now we know Barnabas. We've heard of Barnabas. Well, that's the Jonas. And you see, the apostles, when they came through, they, they love Bar Barnabas. I guess today maybe we would call him Barney. I heard something earlier about a citizen's arrest that reminded me of that. But Barney, but here it is Barnabas. And, and you know, um, the apostles nicknamed him that because it says being interpreted was the son of consolation. Didn't we just see that word consolation in, in Corinthians? He was a man of encouragement. That's what Barnabas was. He was an encourager. And I, I, want, I want to just read basically here. Um, I, want, I can't go into to much detail here, but look at verse 36. Here's Barnabas, the son of encouragement. He's a Levite, and he's of the country of Cyprus. Uh, one time he spent time on the island there at Cyprus. Uh, but here, look at verse 37. Look what he's done. And I, I don't know why. I guess maybe you could read it here and figure out some hows and whys and who's. But for just for our learning today, for encouragement, look at verse 37. Having land. So he has land. Now Barnabas has some money, had, had some riches. But having land, he sold it. He said, what's so encouraging about that? There's a lot of people, a lot of people in Jerusalem at this time that didn't have anything to eat or even put on their feet to wear. Very poor. So, here he is. 
in the book of Acts. He sells his land and he brought the money and he laid it right down at the apostles' feet. He is saying, here is what I want to give to you. I want you to use this in your ministry and you do whatever God calls you to do with this. Wow. An encourager. The consolation, the Holy Spirit, the paraclete is here. Um, First Thessalonians says, Now we exhort you, we encourage you, brethren. Warn them that are unruly and comfort or encourage the feeble-minded. Now, for a long time, now watch this. For a long time, when this was being talked about, this is First Thessalonians chapter 5, it says, encourage Brother, encourage the feeble-minded. You know what I thought about that? I never did look it up. I said, why do I feeble-minded is? That is those that may be diseased. That is those that may not have their whole mind together. And I'm not being uh, sarcastic or rude. I'm just saying it could be something mentally, something that that's, something is wrong, uh, physically wrong with how their brain functions. And so they're feeble-minded. They're weak. And then I begin studying that word. Do you know who the feeble-minded are? Those that are discouraged. So, if you want to say to another one that's discouraging you, you're a feeble-minded soul. Well, you correct in the Greek, but watch out, because they may be swinging, amen, because they're not going to understand that. Listen, the people that is feeble-minded are the ones that are discouraged. And we need to encourage the discouraged. As we continue on here, I want to talk about the true encourager. Uh, everyone knows at least one person that is in need. If you see Barnabas, how he came and just dropped that money off at the apostles' feet. Now you write me a detailed check and you can get it on my, uh, take it out on my insurance or you can get it back on your taxes. Now make sure. There you go. I've had people do that to me. And I always ask them a very important question. I say, is this money mine? They say, no, it's for the church. Amen. Uh, so I've had people come up and say, the Lord has told me to give this to you. Use it any way you want. I said, for me? They said, oh, no, the church. Okay. Uh, but a true encourager is honest and they're trustworthy. And I want to I read over to Acts chapter 9. Just bear with me. Then we're talking about the encourager. But I want you to get the scoop. I'm not going to. We don't have time to do a study here. But I just want to, you to listen to this. Uh, Paul is speaking here in verse 22 of chapter 9. Now listen to this. But Saul increased the more in strength and confounded the Jews which dwelt at Damascus, proving that this was his very Christ. And after that, now this is after Paul just got saved. And... After that, many days were fulfilled. The Jews took counsel to kill him. But their laying awake was known of Saul. What was they doing? They were hiding out. They were fixing to assassinate kill him. And they watched the gates day and night to kill him. So here is Paul, and he's turned his back on the Jews, on Judaism and, and works and religion. And he has found Christ, and, and they hate him, and they're going to kill him. Then the disciples took him by night. Who? The disciples. And, and led him down the wall with a basket. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him. So this little band of disciples took Paul down there and said, Hey, look, uh, this guy, this ain't no more Saul. And they all took off running. And he said, Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because they thought that, he, that Saul was there to kill him. Because that's what he had been doing all this time. And then there was someone that was the encourager. We've already met him. And when Saul was come to Jerusalem, in verse 26, he essayed to join himself to the disciples, but they were all afraid of him and believed not that he was a disciple, that he was a believer. But Barnabas, here we go again. But Barnabas took him and brought him to the apostles, declared unto him them how he had seen the Lord in the way, and that he had spoken to him, and how he had preached boldly at Damascus in the name of Jesus. So here we go. You're going to find out that an encourager is going to be a true friend. Just like the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You find one that is positive, that's not bitter, that's not discouraged, but it's an encourager. 
and always looks for the moment to seize and serve a Christ and to go forward in life and to further the kingdom of God, they've got their head on their shoulders. You even give the money to the apostles' feet and said, I don't need a receipt. Amen? And went his way. And then now he's standing up and saying, oh, y'all get back here, get back here. Th this guy's preaching now. He was the only one out of the crowd that stood up and believed Paul. And here's where I'm going to close. Now, we're talking about the encourager today. And I pray that you're the encourager that we see here. Why did I take it down to Barnabas? Because out of the Godhead, uh, the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost, <coughs> we are humans. And humans can be encouragers because God has uh, gave us everything that we need to encourage others. Now, listen to this. Here's what a true encourager is going to do. Not only help, encourage, give, um, tell you uh, the good things about you, tell you that you will be with them, that you will be their friend. Sometimes they'll even hurt your feelings because they're being honest, but they're doing it in such a fashion that would encourage you. And they're doing this and doing that and they're helping you. And when you see them, that's the type of person that you want to be around because they're always an encouragement. I met a woman not long back. She said, I haven't seen you for years. I said, how you doing? She says, I'm doing good. But she said, it looks like you've lost hair and gained a little weight. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I got to go. Those begging chips are over there calling my name. We'll, we'll talk about you later. <laughs> the true encourager. She was right, by the way. The true encourager, they, they desire something else. You want to be an encourager, an encourager, a true encourager? Romans chapter 15, verse 5 and 6. You don't even have to turn there. I'm, I'm going to read it for you. Listen to this. Now the God of patience and consolation. What is consolation, folks? Encouragement. Now the God of patience and encouragement grants you, it says, to be like-minded. Now this is what God puts inside of you. To be like-minded one toward another according to yourself. No way. According to Christ Jesus. Do you know that we are to treat our fellow, fellow brothers and sisters as if they were talking to Jesus? Let me do that verse again. Let me read it on. we got to close. Now the God of patience and encouragement grants you, he gives you the ability to be like-minded one towards another according to, to Christ. And, and verse 6. Now here's what the encourager is. That you may with one mind, all of us that are encouragers in unity, in corporate worship, which we call the church, all of us in one single mindedness as Christ. That we with one mouth glorify God. <laughs> you see the discourager? Well, I think God could have done that service a little different. Well, I don't know if that was my church. Well, I don't know if that was a God-called message. Did you see that dress she wore today? Pitiful. That's not like minus. Let me get through this verse so we can close. That you may with one mind, all of us, in one mind, all of us go together in one. Ephesians has a lot to say about unity. I know Jason has talked through a lot of that. And the church unity. But listen here. In one mind and one mouth. One mind and one mouth. Glorify God, the Father of our Lord, Jesus Christ. An encourager? I didn't say it would be easy. 
I didn't say that you would be that 100% of the time. But you know what? We can sure try to work on it. Amen. Amen. And we can be that Christian.